Okay, here we go. I'd like to call the Historic Preservation Commission uh, meeting uh, for Tuesday, July 13th, 2021 to order. Um, we have um, roll call. McGivern. Present. Franken. Here. Sage. Here. Wilga. Not present. Miranda. Here. Liz Teggy. Here. We have quorum. Thank you. And under item number two, we have the secretary's report, uh, approval of uh, last minute meetings. Is there any changes or recommendations from the commission? Can I get it just all in favor? Oh, actually, we need a motion in the second for the minute. Oh, do we need a motion in a second? Yeah. Matthew. Motion to approve. Second. A motion in a second. Do I need a roll call on that as well, Laura? You can just do a uh, voice vote. Voice vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, under item number three, communications. Uh, anything from staff? None at this time. All right. Old business. We have no old business, so we'll take us to new business. Uh, item number A, case number C0A21-10, request for installation of a new uh, monument sign located at 515 Ripley Street, Hamburg Local uh, Landmark District. Uh, staff? Sure, so the case before us today is to approve a sign that has already been installed on the property. Uh, so this is located in the Hamburg Local Landmark Historic District. Uh, the building's currently, well, there's two separate buildings. They're currently being renovated uh, for the conversion into multifamily dwelling units. And during building inspection, it was just noted that a sign had been placed on the property uh, prior to HBC approval. So the current sign is situated in between the two structures. Uh, the sign is 21.4 square feet in area. It is four feet, nine inches tall and four and a half feet wide. It's a metal sign. Uh, the text, it contains the words Wooler Flats in an arc in an Art Deco style font. Um, it's not internally illuminated, but there are lights on the ground that can shine up towards the sign. So here's a zoomed in photo of what the sign looks like uh, currently. So it's set back just from inside the sidewalk uh, between the two structures. So staff is making a recommendation to approve the certificate of appropriateness for the freestanding sign. Um, the sign was reviewed for conformance with the historic preservation ordinance and it meets the following standards. As every reasonable effort shall be made to make the minimum number of changes necessary to maintain a designated property in a good state of repair, thereby minimizing the impact of the proposed alteration um, so typically with signs, if you could install a freestanding sign, it has least impact on the building itself as compared to installing a wall sign or a projecting sign that might change the character of the building. Um, standard two, site improvement should have as minimal of an impact as possible to the designated property. So by placing the sign in between the two structures, um, it does not visually impair any of the architecture of the two buildings. And then finally, the height of the proposed monument sign is compatible with the designated property and the surrounding structures. Thank you. Is there anyone from the commission that has any questions for staff? Thank you, Mr. Mm -hmm. Right, Diane. I just had, first of all, our, I'll say officially, Art Deco is one of my favorite styles, so I love the sign. I didn't get over to see the buildings. And from the photograph, it looks like what the, when they were built, 1910. It's not what I would call art an Art Deco architectural element in any way. Uh, I don't know if that goes into signage requirements that it, I don't know what 1910 signage would be exactly. Yeah, I just wonder if it was a consideration or we should be aware of signage as appropriate to the building it's representing? Sure. Uh, so the sign does comply with the standards for the city's zoning ordinance and sign code. 
So by that measure, um, it would be approved had it not been in a historic district. Um, in terms of font styles, typically it's the applicant that will choose the style that fits their development. Okay. And then it's the commission's decision to then vote whether that's appropriate for the building and the architecture or not. Okay, thank you for the clarification. Is there anyone else from the commission? Uh, is the, petition, the petitioner is here? Is the petitioner like to address the commission at all? Uh, no, I guess just more to. Jamie, Jamie, if you could stand oh, up sorry, and, sure. and then talk at the square box in the ceiling, that will pick here? up your voice. Yeah, oh, okay. That's the right. microphone. Right. You don't have to right work on. Up, Sorry, still kind of a newbie. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, just more to it. I was just kind of going for something that would match the address signs that went with it in that font style, sort of. And I will totally concede i'm sure you know significantly more about art deco than i do um it was just kind of what i'd thrown out there to the uh, metal fabrication company so i don't know i just thought it fit with it and you are absolutely more than welcome any point in time you want to take a tour i would love to show you through it so but anyway any other questions seriously please you know let me know you did a nice job with the building thanks i appreciate it really cheers did. thanks a lot Okay, uh, so I need to make a, I need a motion in a second or some direction from the commission. I make a motion that we approve the sign. Second. We got a motion and a second to approve. Roll call, please. Franken? Yes. Sage? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Plus Teggy? Yes. McGivern? Yes. Motion passes. Takes us to uh, item number B, case number C08 21 12. Request for exterior alteration of the detached garage at 731 West 8th Street, Hamburg Local uh, Landmark Historic District. Uh, Jaeger is the petitioner. Staff? Sure. So the proposal is to basically remodel the exterior of the existing 1977 detached garage. So the home itself was built in uh, approximately 1900, and then the garage was added at the end of the 70s. It's so a roughly 384 square foot two car garage. Um, it's on the east side of the home and takes access from West A Street. And it is set back roughly 40 feet from that front lot line. So the picture on the left shows you what that view is from the street. Um, on the screen before you are images of what the garage looks like today. So you can see that it has a aluminum siding that's uh, a bit deteriorated and um, in need of replacement. The garage itself doesn't contain any historic materials. Um, Uh, so this kind of just outlines what the proposal is for. I just want to note that the image is just a, a template garage. So the actual garage itself will not be those colors. It'll be um, a darker black uh, architectural shingle roof to match the house, um, as well as um, a white vinyl siding, as well as cedar shake and corval siding. Um, on the gable of the garage to match the home as well. They also will be installing white aluminum gutters, a new window, a new steel door with a quarter window at the top, a new garage overhead door with windows, and then um, white aluminum soffit and fascia. So pretty much remodeling the full exterior of the detached garage. So staff is making a recommendation to approve the certificate of appropriateness for exterior alteration of the garage. Uh, it was reviewed for conformance with the historic preservation ordinance and it meets the following standards. Uh, that's that new additions and related new construction shall not be discouraged when such improvements do not destroy the historic material and such design is compatible with the size, massing, scale, color, materials, and character of the property, neighborhood, and district. So just given the fact that the garage um, was not original with the construction of the home and it's set back from the street, 
we found that it met that standard. And then finally, site improvements. So landscaping and other site improvements uh, should have as minimal of an impact as possible to the property and its original plan and layout and visual character. Thank you, Matt. Does uh, any of, are there any commissioners that have questions for staff? Seeing none, is the petitioner have any is the petitioner here and have any desire to address the commission? She's not here, but I was representing in case there was any questions. Okay. Does the commission have any questions? I need a recommendation from the commission. I recommend to approve the certificate. I have a motion. I need a second. Second. Roll call, please. Les Teggy? Yes. McGivern? Yes. Franken? Yes. Sage? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Motion passes. This takes us to item number C, case number C zero A twenty one dash thirteen, request for installation of a new roof at five twenty eight West Eighth Street, Hamburg Local Landmark Historic District. Bassinger is the petitioner. Um, on behalf of Griffin, staff. Okay, so the proposed project is to uh, replace the asphalt shingle roof. It's not original to the home. Um, the roof was damaged during a storm event, so it's a complete uh, re-roof of the project. The proposed material is a GAF Timberline HDZ com composition laminate asphalt shingle and barkwood. So essentially it's replacing a non-original asphalt shingle roof with a new asphalt shingle roof in a similar color to complement the exterior of the home. Um, attached are images sent by the applicant just showing different sides of the home and then some of the damage caused by the storm and uh, its need for replacement. Okay. Is there any questions from commission? Commissioners to staff. Does the petitioner wish to address the commission? I need a recommendation from the commission. I recommend to approve the new roof. Second. second. A motion and a second for approval. Roll call, please. Uh, Sage. Yes. Miranda. Yes. Les Teggy. Yes. McGivern. Yes. Franken. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Takes us to item number D. Case number C0821-14. Installation of new soffits, fascia, breeze boards, uh, barge uh, boards, crown molding, and derail molding. I'm sorry, dental moldings of 517 West 7th Street, the Iowa College SS Gillett residence, located within the Hamburg Local Landmark Historic District. And we have uh, Davila Construction. I know I'm, I killed that name, I'm sorry, as a petitioner on behalf of the uh, Morrisons. Step. Okay, so this home is also known as the Iowa College and then later the SS uh, Gillett residence. So the home was consists of really two, the original structure, which was built around 1900. It's a brick building in a Greek revival architectural style. So this was the first home of Iowa College before it moved. And then later it was purchased and um, used as a residence. And then that's when the um, additions were placed on the west and southeast elevations of the home in a colonial revival uh, architectural style. So the site inventory form lists several uh, distinctive features. Uh, the first one is the wide uh, dental cornice, triangular front pediment, and then the veranda with the semicircular south side uh, porch. So the project scope uh, consists of several different items, so I'll just kind of run through it. 
Um, the first is really the replacement of missing and deteriorated slash beyond repair components, which includes roughly 650 linear feet of six different styles of trim and 240 linear feet of TNG soffit and freezeboard panels. Uh, all materials are to be replicated by the contractor to match the existing using tight grain fur. Uh, two, approximately 250 linear feet of fascia boards are to be replaced using locally available select pine trim material. Uh, the remainder of the items to be repaired, scraped, puttied, sanded, primed, and painted, so reusing existing material where available. Uh, minor repairs to attachment points, uh, which will include rafter tails, framing, backup blocking, et cetera. Uh, this is really needed to ensure adequate fastening of the material and reattachment of old components. Uh, five adjacent areas of the siding are to be repaired and replaced to ensure water tight integrity. So uh, to prevent further deterioration. And then six potential minor repairs uh, to roof edging and shingles may be required for the quality seal um, of the wood members. So the next few slides are just a series of photos submitted by the applicant kind of showing up close some of that trim that will be duplicated, uh, repaired and replaced where needed. So some portions of the house you could see um, repairs possible, whereas others are you know, the wooden trim is rotted. So those are the sections that will need to be uh, replaced with new material that's compatible to that existing. So staff is making a recommendation to approve the certificate of appropriateness for repair and replacement. So staff reviewed the project for conformance with the historic preservation ordinance and found that it met the following criteria. So every reasonable effort shall be made to make the minimum number of changes necessary to maintain the property in good state of repair. Uh, the removal, alteration, or concealing of distinguishing exterior architectural features and historic material uh, should be avoided when possible. So that material that still can be salvaged um, should be rather than replace. Uh, distinctive architectural features, construction techniques, and examples of craftsmanship that characterize a designated property shall be treated with due consideration. And then four, uh, deteriorated architectural features should, where possible, re be repaired rather than replaced. And um, where the severity of deterioration requires replacement, the new feature shall match the old in design, color, texture, and other visual qualities. Uh, as close as possible. So the good thing about this project is that we can see that existing form and that existing architecture. So we have that template um, to create new to match the existing. Are there any questions from the commissioners uh, to uh, the staff? So oh, the only work's going to be done is on the roof line then? Correct. So it's going to be the soffit, fascia, all the trimming and ground molding around, along the roof line. And then um, if any of the siding along that area requires replacement, they'll incorporate that into the project as well. Mm -hmm. Anyone else from the commission? Is there anyone representing the petitioner that would like to speak to the commission? Okay. I need a recommendation from the commission. I make a motion at the uh, consideration of the project. Second. I have a motion and a second for approval. Roll call, please. Franken? Yes. Sage? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Lestaggy? Yes. McGivern? Yes. Motion passes. Good luck. So, great project, good property. Takes us to item number E, case number C0A21-15, request for exterior alteration of 709 Brown Street. The William H. Weiss residence is located within the Hamburg Local Landmark Historic District. Don Sanitago is the petitioner. I've got bad glasses, I'm sorry. <laughs> 
Michael or Matthew? Mm -hmm. Um, yep, so this is the William H. Uh, Weiss residence. He was a prominent manufacturer. Uh, he started the American Biscuit Company in Davenport. And then he also was a financier and uh, established a bank that later became known as Davenport Bank and Trust. This home was built in 1895. Uh, one of its prominent features is that it does have a red clay tile roof. So one of the few red clay tile roofs in the city. And the home itself is built with brick and stucco and features uh, several uh, prominent architectural features, uh, such as that tower on the south facade. Uh, so the project scope before us today is for complete roof repair and replacement. Uh, there is a garage towards the rear of the property that has a deck and patio on the roof. So repair of that. The installation of new gutters, soffit, and fascia, and then the replacement of porch columns. So the roof was damaged during the derecho um, in August of 2020. It's a French clay tile roof that's original to the home. So as part of that process, the roof will be, the existing tile will be taken off the roof. The roofers will install new underlayment, and then they will use the existing tiles put them back on the roof, and then um, any damaged or deteriorated tile they'll take out and then install with new clay tiles. So that's really done. You try to utilize that existing tile to the best of your ability and save what you can, and then bring in new where needed. Uh, the replacement tile uh, will be the same style, color, and thickness as the original. Uh, so then there, that leads us to the garage. So this is uh, towards the north of the property. So the garage takes access from that rear alley. So you can see uh, Google Street View on the bottom left, uh, what that might look like. The roof is not visible from the public right away. Um, however, it does have red uh, pavers on the roof that are in fairly good condition. So the owner, as part of the project, will just be doing regrouting, painting, and sealing of that. Uh, deck uh, tile roof. And then along with the re-roofing, um, new gutters will be installed. So the existing gutters were a Yankee style. Um, our understanding is that Yankee style gutters are difficult to install. I don't think it's the industry standard anymore like it was uh, back when these homes were first built. So the roofer will build uh, gutters with softened fascia to resemble that Yankee style gutter. So gutters will be uh, copper as well as with the downspouts, and then it will be a wood soffit and fascia uh, to complement that existing look. And then finally, with the scope of the project, uh, the deteriorated wood columns will be reconstructed with new wood material and painted to match the original. So they're going to do their, uh, do you know the best to replicate those existing porch columns to maintain that same appearance, but with new material since that wood has become rotted uh, with time. Um, so staff is making a recommendation to approve the certificate of appropriateness, uh, subject to three conditions. So condition one is just uh, to the greatest extent possible that the existing clay tile roof be preserved and reused. Condition two is product specifications of the existing clay tile and proposed replacement clay tile uh, be submitted to staff for review and approval. Um, that's just because we didn't get uh, physical or product sheets submitted on what that proposed clay tile specification is to see how well it matches the existing. Mm -hmm. And then three, uh, using pictorial evidence of the existing porch columns, the new columns should match the old in design, color, texture, and other visual qualities. And then uh, staff reviewed it for conformance with the Historic Preservation Ordinance and found that it met the following criteria. And that deteriorated architectural features should, where possible, be repaired and replaced, um, where the deterioration is severe, the new features should match the old in design, color, texture, and other visual qualities. Um, 
historic or original architectural features or replacement elements, um, which in all ways replicate the original should be repaired where possible. And then finally, uh, the roof design and shape should remain consistent with its original configuration and character. All right, commission. Uh, commissioners with any questions uh, for staff, for the man. This isn't really a question, but I'd like to make a comment. It's a thank you to staff that we recently were able to view uh, a uh, workshop on a virtual workshop on clay tiles. And I didn't know anything about clay tiles. Now I know a lot. And this is being done the way it should be done. So I'm very excited by it. Is there anyone else from the commission with questions to staff? Is there anyone here representing the petitioner? Would you like to speak to the commission? You don't have to. <laughs> Is there a recommendation from the commission? I highly recommend to make a motion. To and is, would be the motion as modified with staff recommendations? Um, well, that's up to Diane if you'd like to make a motion to approve with staff conditions or yes. you're free to change yes. it. Yes. Okay. <laughs> second. There's a motion and a second uh, approval of the, the, the for us with staff recommendations. Roll call, please. Sage? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Lestegi? Yes. McGivern? Yes. Franken? Yes. Motion passes. Great project. Thank you very much. That's a big project you've got going on there. That takes us to item number F, case number C0A21-16, installation of a new roof at 312 West 3rd Street, Wolberg Carriage Works is the local designated historic structure. Uh, Joel Johnson, uh, Dave's Roofing, petitioner on behalf of Carriage Works, LLC. Matt? Okay, so this project is a locally designated historic landmark, but it's also located in the Davenport Commercial National Historic District. Um, so the original building was constructed in 1857. It's a vernacular fieldstone two-story building. So that would be the top um, center image on the screen. And then later in 1881, a restrained Italianate three-story brick plow works addition was placed to the front. So that's what abuts Third Street. And then, um, but it's only the back 1857 building that's considered the local historic landmark. And that, so that's also the scope of this project. Um, it's known to be the oldest existing business structure in downtown Davenport. And the original occupant was the Wilbur Carriage Works and the Davenport Plow Company. Uh, so the scope of the project is to remove and replace the existing uh, asphalt shingles in the low slope roof area on the back side of the building along the parking lot. Uh, so that's what's outlined in yellow. So this is a non-original asphalt shingle. And it will be in, uh, a new roof will be a chateau green architectural shingle and then a modified rubber membrane on the low slope area on the west side. So that would be the light gray portion of the roof. We'll have that um, modified membrane. And then um, the roof will better complement that lean-to porch that was approved several years ago. So staff is making the recommendation to approve the certificate of appropriateness to install a new roof. And then once again, reviewed for conformance with the historic preservation ordinance and it met the following criteria um, that the Minimum number of changes shall be made to keep the property in a good state of repair. And then deteriorated architectural features should, where possible, be repaired rather than replaced. However, where severity, the severity of deterioration requires replacement, the new feature should match the old design, color, texture, and other visual qualities. Is 
Does anyone from the commission have questions for Matt or staff? Is there a petitioner here that would like to address the commission? Any direction from the commission? I make a motion to approve the new roof. I second. I have a motion and a second uh, for approval. Roll call, please. Miranda? Yes. Les Teggy? Yes. McGivern? Yes. Franken? Yes. Sage? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. That takes us to other business. Is there any other business from staff? No, not this time, but there will be a work session uh, following this meeting. Brings us to the time of the meeting for uh, open forum for comments from the public to the commission. Is there anyone from the public that would like to speak to the commission? May I have a motion to adjourn from the commission? Motion to adjourn. Motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We adjourn. Thank you very much. We can sit down here for the work All right, so just a reminder, you know, the work session, we have two projects uh, and two applicants here today that uh, want to get feedback from the commission before they get started with, uh, with their work and come before you with a formal application at a later date. So we'll get started. I see Dwayne and Tim, or sorry, Dwayne and Jeff are back there. If you guys want, you could sit towards the front just so that you're closer. Sure. Yeah, sit up to the table. <laughs> Go ahead and throw it up here. And... <laughs> well, by way of introduction, I'm Dwayne Tim. This is my partner, Jeff Gomez. And uh, we have a house at 630 West 5th Street, or more commonly known as the corner of 5th and Gaines. So, um... <clears throat> The house has been through a lot of people and changes in its life, and we're trying to uh, restore it. Restore it. So um, there it is, uh, <laughs> yeah. Mr. Uh, Ruth was a brick manufacturer. Also, plus he and his uncle had the first pork processing plant in Davenport. And it's where the small little family credit union is, and I get to say across from the former Oscar Meyer plant. And um, anyhow, um, I think what sure. we're wanting to do is, do you have any? Yeah, I do. So uh, we met with the applicant. Uh, basically, there's four different projects that they're proposing that all kind of tie in together. So I think it might be best if we just kind of break it down one piece at a time. That's good. So let's start with the rear addition okay. that you're proposing. All right. So that's what's outlined in yellow. So it'll be at the north end of the building. And then we have some photos up there showing of what that currently looks like today. It would extend outward and then match with 
um, the east elevation wall that projects out. And then Duane drew up a couple of images showing what that might look like. And so we're just looking for feedback um, on what the commission thinks for building material, for style, and placement. So he is, there is a window on that north elevation that's being preserved. Yeah. That's so good. that will remain intact and then it'll be set back after that. So you can see that window on the right will remain in place and still be visible with the addition. So basically what we're wanting to do is in that addition, it's going to be a, a small little entryway mudroom and then the back part will be a, a, a bathroom. Uh, right now there's no bathroom or restroom facility on the main floor. If somebody's at our house and they need to use the facilities, they have to go upstairs. What is the proposed depth of the, because you're right there on the corner lot, right there as you go up the, up the hill, right. right? What's the what's the depth of the addition, you think? In, is it... oh, um, so, we were, yeah, everything is profit measurement because we we haven't met with anybody to do okay um, because we were kind of directed to kind of come here first before we paid for a bunch mm -hmm. of drawings and then those get changed and now I got to pay pay for changes so um, so we were probably we were guessing probably fifteen to sixteen feet because um, you want to come into an area that's comfortable for a mudroom, but you still need area because the plan is to have just a stand up shower, uh, you know, three quarters bath really um, on that on that level. So um, and uh, so we do know that since we are in the corner, the building that's behind our house um, had been the carriage house. It got divided off at some point. So we have to have that surveyed. So we know we also have to eventually go to planning and zoning for a variance because we'll probably be pushing the boundary on the back line on lot line too. Yeah. So even, the even at like say if we go like uh, 15 foot out, we still have probably about a good three, maybe four foot actually more but between the building and the fence. And the fence was always just generally considered the lot line, but we don't know that for sure. So one of our first things to do is to hire a, a surveyor get and get, get in there and really find out where is the lot line. Yeah. So I, I so going with a fifteen sixteen projection out, I rough measurement had anywhere from five to six feet back there of clearance between the building and the lot line. That would be a tough brick to match up. If you so we're not. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be um, the a wood so, addition. I so think. and we haven't decided. We, we've talked about board and batten or um, clapboard because we'll be here eventually talking about a carriage house too. That's right. in the I plan. Mean, yeah. So you know, and I think uh, we're, board we're and batten. Know you people. <laughs> yeah. Um, there, there is a a house in the neighborhood that has a little bump out on the back that was board and batten. I think it's been changed at some point, but uh, I think it's, that is appropriate, but I think clapboard's appropriate too. We haven't decided. And we're open to recommendations and ideas from you people. This is a detail that I looked up vernacular uh, grief revival. Your home was 1865? 66. Yeah. 66. Close. Um, and what they showed me was if it was used for a domestic residence or a simple function, simple business, the what we would call gingerbread on the porch drawing. I know these are just your first drawings, but I would just caution you to look at some of these images to decide really what would be appropriate. It would be something fairly simple uh, up near the post. Do we have a picture of that drawing? I have actually um, a drawing, and this comes from a house almost the same age in DeWitt, Iowa. Good. And I, Good. I've driven by this Good. house a number of okay. times, and finally I saw some people on the porch, <laughs> and I stopped right then and there and ran up and said, I love your porch, and I want to redo my porch someday. 
And um, I said, is there any way I can maybe get a step ladder and trace your your bracket? And she said, well, that several have fallen off the house already. Oh. And so they're out in the, in the garage. The so let, let, us, let us get you one, and you can lay your paper down on the porch floor and set the bracket down and draw it out. So, well, that was handy. You, you tell me, yeah. So this, Oh, you've got it right there. There it is. Right, right, right. Okay. Good for you. All right. Now, let me ask you this. Was the surface fairly flat? Yes. 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 There was no carvings in this. Right. It's pro probably about, oh, maybe a good two inches thick. And no relief. No. Perfect. Perfect. No. Yeah. Very simple. It. Just a very simple. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the beauty comes in the design of it, not in any detail, I guess. Yeah. That's how I should say. Yeah. And... I, I suppose kind of walking into the next part um, if we go to and the reason why we have like the little porch coming over the what would be the new side um, back door um, is because originally there was a porch on the side of the house um, between the original main house and then what we believe was an addition we can't we're not really sure when the edit when they add on but um, so between the pantry and that um, main the, block of the in house. that area, you can see yeah. the ghost lines there. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So we would carry the brackets and the post and the roof line completely across. And then we would like extend the house out back. And so everything here will match that little half porch back there. If that makes mm -hmm. sense. Yeah. yeah. And then so they have two different yeah. there there's mm -hmm. some yeah oh yeah sure yeah so there's two porches that you're yes yeah there'll be the one main that... porch that we were putting back which was originally on the house <coughs> unfortunately we have no pictures of it i mean we've had scouts out for <laughs> several yeah, years yeah we've had for good friends who do this kind of research and right. um yeah. one of our our friends is retired um uh uh uh, research librarian and she and she couldn't find we found some stuff um, but uh, there's either been a tree or, um, or steam steam engine smoke in front of our house um yeah so even bird's eye maps are are, are worthless so um, have been worthless so it's, it's kind of funny but we find everybody else on our blocks house <laughs> not knowing is great freedom I know. <laughs> really, it is. Yeah, it's, it, it, yeah. yeah. Right, there you go. Yeah, I know, because we can imagine what was there. So. All right. So, then. so I would imagine that when we're talking about what do we want to do first, I would imagine we want to do this as one of our first projects, that, and then continue the roof. Yeah, the torch and the, and the addition and would the go addition. hand to hand together. Because... The whole roof line would have to be extended all the way over to that little half porch, if you will. Yeah, because it's a hipped roof on the one end right now of that. Pantry. Which I don't think was original. I think it was just always uh, a pitched roof all the way across. And then when they took off this, see what they did is they made this house into a fourplex. Mm -hmm. Actually, they made it into a fiveplex. And... Um, I'll have to tell you, and, and, and Jeff says, we're not here for stories, but I'm going to tell you a little story because you, you guys are going to love it. For years, I worked in administration and the shipping department out there at the steel mill uh, by Bluegrass, and uh, a trucker came in there, and he says, oh, he says, uh, you live in that house there on the corner of 5th and Gaines, don't you? And I said, oh, yes. And he says, man, I tell you what, as a kid, he says, you know, uh, the Grim Reapers lived in the, the bottom apartment in the basement. I said, well, I've heard that. And they've spray-painted all sorts of things. Ozzy down, rolls and stuff Ozzy like that, graffiti. And stuff like that. And he said, there was anywhere from one to 20 motorcycles in your front lawn. And there was always somebody who was face down on the... On, I said, oh, sweet, you know. Anyhow. So. That's why we weren't allowed to go down there. <laughs> well, it's a whole lot better now. It is. I, mean, I, must I, I would think your biggest challenge is going to be your exterior materials on the outside, you know. In, of the addition. In, on the addition, for the most part. I mean, I think that'll be your biggest struggle that you're going to have to figure out. <clears throat> um, but 
Well, they think it's going to be wood. Yeah, it's going to be wood. You know, it's going to be wood. Yeah. What color? Good luck. Everyone will judge you as they go up the hill forever. I don't care. <laughs> it won't be purple or pink. <laughs> there you it go. Yeah. The house, um, we, so we've gone back to what would be original or, or historic colors on the trim work and stuff that, and, and sashes. So it's the dark um, hunter green. There you um, go. With the and, cream. And, and stuff. So, um, and with the cream um, frames. So, what will the body of the, I'm guessing it'll probably be a cream or something like that. Maybe oh. a light tan. I don't know. How much side yard do you have over there on the east side where the porch is? A whole is? lot. Yeah, there was never a I house really, built there. There was never a, lo never oh, a house really nice. So the guy... When, when he bought that, he bought two lots, and I thank him yet to this day for doing that. <laughs> because here's the deal. When we come out and, and we enjoy our side yard, that house is a wonderful buffer of Gaines. all the traffic going up and down Gaines Street. Mm -hmm. so, oh, yeah. You can do wonders with that lot. Well, we'll have you over. We have been doing wonders with the lot. The yeah, landscaping got, has been coming we've along. We've got quite the garden going out front. Yeah. Flowers. So when you come up Gain Street, I, I want people to think, geez, that almost looks like a park. <laughs> All right, do you want me to move on to the red yep. portion? Sure. Yep. Okay. Yeah, keep, keep us going. Keep oh, right oh no, you're fine. So this <laughs> here... Um, shows up in the 1880s Sanborn Fire maps. Um, former commission member Dave Cordes discovered it for us. We could never figure out what its purpose was because since the building was a fiveplex, fourplex, we thought it was a we thought it was a lot of effort to just create an entrance or whatever, or a closet. So, or a closet. It's not very big, four to five feet. Um, they wide inside. Yep. Took out a win. Um, they um, so there should be two windows. Um, and, and downstairs. downstairs. So they made the one downstairs window in the more southern, southerly one into a door, uh, and then put this side porch, this side room on, which originally um, we believe was like a little conservatory, you know, for plants or whatever. Um, and so, so the expense why... of restoring this for no purpose um so we want to put the window back and there is um a full-size basement window underneath because when this house was originally built it was just the front block and the dining formal dining room and kitchen were in the basement which there's many um examples, examples of in that in, in the gold coast where the formal dining room and kitchen were there because this house only sits about two foot deep in the dirt in the front. front and as the hill goes up they um, built into it. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So, so that's, that's what it would look like once we've uh, removed that bump out. And these little things here, I'll tell you what, um, down in the basement, uh, these, these are basically window wells, and those were full-size windows. This one still exists underneath this, and this one here they put like a little they open window. And then they filled it up with dirt, and down in the basement, it's just kind of stacked cement blocks. So I'm I'm hopeful, knock on wood, that it's going to be an easy, well, somewhat easy task to, to pull that out, get rid of all that dirt, and have a full-size window made for down in the basement, which will really increase the light. The penetration, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, put it put it back to kind of how how it was. Is that typical? I'm newer to the board, so okay. I'm learning. To have just the four windows in the front, and then there will be nothing on that back side. Oh, so this is the side of the house. Okay. Yeah, this is the side of the house. This is still on that. I mean, is there rooms in that back? I mean, I'm just wondering why there's yes. no... Yes. There no um, you don't mind me, Matt, you don't mind me running up there and pointing on things, do you? No, no, not at all. Okay, cool. Go ahead. Okay, so you have a front parlor here, a back parlor there, and then on the other side is, is, uh, is the hallway with an open stairs, and then this had like a little library alcove on the west side of the house. 
So upstairs you have a bedroom here, you have your master bedroom there, you have another bedroom on the west side, and then you have a small little room um, in the very southwest corner of the oh, house. Do you have a picture of the front of the uh, house? Yeah. Who knows, maybe it was a nursery, maybe it was just a trunk room, whatever. Jeff and I have made it well, into like a closet room that you can actually, we have a closet system in there that you can hang up your stuff. And, well, the two windows are in the front, are what for that front parlor oh, where you see the blank okay. wall. Where the blank is. So okay. yeah, they didn't build. The they didn't the build a dark room. No. And some <laughs> years ago, I just thought that was odd. Some years ago, when we we redid these windows, we came to you people because they had shortened these windows. They originally went all the way down to the floor, and this is all cement block, just stuckled over with cement. And we'll, we'll, we'll be back to talk about that in the future. But, uh, um, and then we're, we're lucky to have the original um, steps there a couple of years ago. We had reset. them all reset so that they weren't all on angles and stuff like that. And so then, now that we're at the front, um, the porch, our stoop there, um, there's actually a door underneath that that's original to the house so right. if you came into the house you could enter and go into the formal dining room um yeah. and then up the upstairs and that so that changes john roosh changed that when he brought the dining room up into that addition but um our goal is to um put and i know there's uh, ghost lines of a porch we don't think the full porch across the front was original it was a mcclellan house we believe there was a hood over that, so um, eventually we want to recreate the hood, but we want to get the stoop taken care of. Um, go ahead, Dwayne. Well, I tell you what, yeah, it is a it is a Thomas McCollin house. Uh, the house on the other end of the block is owned by these people right here. They have a small little porch. I've I've not found any ghost lines that there was anything here to indicate a small little porch. We have the ghost lines coming down here because I think in 1882, a number of things happened to this house. I think that's when he put the addition onto the back. I think that's when he put that bump out. And I think that's when he put a front porch on, on the very front. So if you walk through the um, Gold Coast neighborhood, I've kind of made a discovery with uh, Thomas McClellan houses. They either have a double door or they have a single door. And almost every house in our neighborhood that has a single door has a hood over it, a, a big fancy hood. N there's not a one of them that's, that's over a double door, and there's not a one of them that, that is matched. He varied it just ever so slightly, house by house. And so, um, Jeff and I kind of think, wouldn't that be neat to put a hood back on the house? So, what do you guys think? <laughs> well, give us some thought, I guess. Well, you won't get to that until you're done with the addition. Yes, that's correct. But I'm... I'm, I'm planting seeds right now, so. What would the material have been on that hood? What do you Wood. Wood. Yeah. Yeah, all of them are, you know, the big brackets mm -hmm. with uh, some kind of finial yeah. and, and, and stuff, so. Um, Very beautiful. I mean, you know. And we, we, we walked the neighborhood, and we just kind of took a look at each one of them. And, uh, like, friends of ours, theirs has stars in it. Um, another one, you just other, you know, it's just, they were all varied just slightly. So, yeah. And then we have columns coming down off of them. The only yeah, one is, um, the only, uh, only one is, one is uh, on the corner of 5th and West. Tony and Otis, yeah. But the rest of them were just with the brackets. Yeah. Um, and so with the porch, we want to hire um, boilers. That it's right over here. Okay. And um, so I'll let you. Okay. So you got we, uh, we were fortunate to find this, um, and I'm going to very gently lay it on this table so I don't scratch up at the table, but 
This is a bracket, and we have 24 of them. They were made at the foundry at the arsenal, and they were used on interior stairs on the railings. So we probably don't have enough to do what we want to do, and so we might do every other step with this and then just have the, the twisted um, rock metal done that way. So I think this will be a, a great way. I mean, Boilers says that they can um, polish these, these up and uh, powder coat black paint them and they'll be preserved for a long, long time. The treasure. Yeah. I mean, how many of those do you have? 24. I have 24 of them. I noticed your fire, uh, your chimneys yes. are kind of unique. You know, it, it was a stove house, and so each floor has its own flue. So, oh. so in other words, um, down here they would have had a stove in, because this would have been the original dining room, so it had its own flue. Front parlor would have had its own flue, master bedroom its own flue. So when you got up there and looked in the chimney, it's really almost three chimneys in one big area. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, when we came to you guys years ago to, to re-roof the house, um, the roofers said, oh, geez, just let us knock these chimneys off. And I said, <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, I said, and, and I tell you what, I, I spent a lot of money keeping these chimneys because we've had them repainted and, and stuff so that they don't leak. And... Uh, I just wanted to make sure they weren't going to look like the draw. Oh, no, 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 no. They'll, 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 remain, they'll remain like what you see in the picture. Okay? And um, 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 actually, is there anything else that you would like to throw by us here real quick? Uh, anything else you got? Do we have anything else that we need to talk about? I don't think so. Staff, have you heard anything that, anything that you want to throw out that thoughts or process or yeah i've met with um duane and tim or i keep saying tim yeah. duane and jeff <laughs> at their house the other week and um kind of just walked through the project and we yeah, that's when we took the photos and then duane drew up the, the drawings and of what it might look like and everything that i'm hearing so far sounds like it's on the right track mm -hmm. and i think that this work session was a good introduction to the commission on the project and it sounds like your timeline probably be more next year you'll right. actually come before the commission. Maybe wood prices right. will be down. By then. <laughs> <laughs> well, th this is the year to, yeah. to think and plan yeah. and, yes. and get all of our ducks in a row. And because we're because when I said to Matt, I said, "Well, we're not here to say, hey, we want to start this project next week." And he said, "Oh, thank God, you know." Yeah. And uh, um, yeah, it's it's a next year project, really. Yeah. Boilers project would probably be, they'd probably have those for three months, I gotta imagine, right now. Well, we had to make uh, the railings to the house next door, and then they also made the railings when I showed you the, the original stone steps going down, and so um, we have had them do work for us, and we've been pleased with them. And, yeah, and um, busy. We, we, yeah. we, we had them put the cast iron. Um, um, pineapples on the ends of the post, which yeah. was the ever sim lasting symbol of hospitality. So, any questions, comments, or things that you want to throw at us? Just congratulations <laughs> for undertaking such a wonderful Thanks, project. Diane. Appreciate it. Thanks for not using the word vinyl. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else? Any other questions? Not really. I think they've hit most of the marks in terms of uh, they're they're correct that they would most likely for that addition on the north side they'd require um, a variance if it was to be allowed. Um, Jake has said uh, uh, no less than five feet from the property line, so it sounds like you're on that track as okay. well. So, and that that's for the building code and fire code. So, okay. And so the setback is so five the feet? setback by ordinance is fifteen feet. Okay. Looking at the lot lines on the county website, it looks like that neighboring fence is well into your yard. So I wouldn't 
count on that fence as being the property line? No, right. I'm not gonna so you'll probably need to get that survey to done. confirm. Yeah, yeah. And then go from there and see if, if you we, need a variance. Yeah. Or if you could tweak the design to make it a little bit shallower to meet the 15 foot setback. Right. Yeah, oh well, even if we gained a couple feet, we, we, oh, yeah. we, we need a variance no matter what, because. I think you have at least 10 feet by by right where you should be okay 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 because since that was the carriage house originally i mean it's like mm -hmm. it's not terribly close but not terribly far yeah. from the house so yeah, and it's sad to watch the the carriage house kind of deteriorate a spiraling decline yeah unfortunately we don't own it but there it is all righty well thank you Ooh. Start saving your pennies. <laughs> this will save me. We already have the money set tonight. aside. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'll have to pay attention to your garden next time I drive by. You do that. I will. Thank you. Thanks. Have a great day. Thank you, Thanks. gentlemen. All righty. All right, Donna. Next, come on up. No, not us, but we just wanted to say one thing. You bet. It's helpful to listen to this. No problem. Thank you. Thanks, man. Have a great day, ladies. Thank you. All right, thanks for your patience, Donna. <laughs> She's the first one in, last one to leave. That's okay. <laughs> um, Donna, do you want me to just give a brief overview? Sure. Okay. Well, I think make sure everyone's doing one thing. Well, I think make everyone's doing what they want them to do, I think, a little. Uh, all right, so this is Donna Martin. She lives uh, at 512 East 6th Street. No, so this is, I don't live there. Oh, you don't? It's okay. not inhabitable. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no She's running working water. on it. <laughs> yeah, I live in bluegrass. Oh, okay. okay. But I'm there as often as I can be. <laughs> All right, so the home was built in 1854. It's commonly known as the Octagon House in Davenport. So it's a two-story building, Italianate architecture. And um, about a year ago, the commission approved a attached garage addition, but that project hasn't been started. So this project that Donna wants feedback on is involving basically the property and the site. So you can see in the middle, um, that's looking at the front of the home. There's a retaining wall right along the lot line along 6th Street. So Donna's proposing to do repair and maintenance to that retaining wall and then to add Am I right? One more retaining wall. So basically to make the front lot be more terraced for ease of maintenance. Can I step in here? Uh -huh. Okay. At the end of the project, there should be three retaining walls. One in the front, then one to support um, the, the original, and then one behind that to let the front yard get increase the front yard so um the one in the one in the very front will help to level out that so we can mow it and maintain it better and then that goes when i bought this then the pro then the city gave me the property next to me and so we'll continue that all the way across so it makes it congruent that it's all one property which it is now in um legally and then um, several people have suggested that I take down where the wall is decrepit I don't want to do that for two reasons there's a gas line going right along it so you can see the markers and um, I just don't like the idea of tearing down the old so what we've come up with is we want to put these bend blocks that look old. Do you have a picture of that? I Did don't, because I didn't want to add something that I wasn't sure. Okay. If that um, was what you were going to use. These. Let's see if I can get that. These. They look very simple. Mm -hmm. They look smooth like the wall is. Mm -hmm. um, so they don't have an impact, like a big 
architecture or uh, landscape impact, and that's what I'm looking for. And so, um, on the drawing again, there is shows the steps. There's two sets of steps. The one to the right is from the second property, and they're they're smaller and in good shape. So we plan on leaving those and taking them up behind the old wall and leveling that area off and filling it with gravel and walk stepping stones and then um, bringing it around, bringing that stairwell as a path going to the walk to the main house, to the main steps, which is wider. The steps to the street are good up to the wall. The others are ter were terrible. They're now gone. Um, and we're going to re replace them with the same kind of thing. And um, then on the property lines, we'll have um, the rock that we're finding on the, on the property and put that along the property line with some lilies to just have it as a as a transition. Um, okay, back to the old wall. So the old wall where it's it's crumbling, we will put the bend blocks and use that as the mold of the frame to put put concrete behind it. And so it'll look smooth at the top, but it'll have the bend blocks in front. And then we're going to also um, put a column on the end to kind of make it a final thing and then bend blocks and then bump out a set of one bend block and use that as a planter where the wall is good and then the same thing all the way across where the old wall is. Is that existing wall stone or is it? It's crumb, it's it's rock behind it, and then they've mortared over it. And I've talked to Kyle Condon, who owns the greenhouse, and seen if he will go along with adding to cover it to fix his crumbling area. So that'll all get fixed. So are those limestone caps on the top of that, or are they just? I believe so. In blocks, are they cement or concrete? They're concrete. They're concrete. Right. Okay. Or cement, concrete, same thing, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, not according to uh, online. They had both of them with different, and that's why I was confused. Yeah, I am too, and my son does this for a living. <laughs> uh huh. Cement, I believe, is the material they use to make the concrete. I think that's the way it is. Am I right? I don't know why they differ. <laughs> it's more of a, uh, it's just basically the, the mortar or the uh, powder and water, so more mm -hmm. like a thin, thinner material where concrete has an aggregate of in it. Okay. Also, usually rock, stone, or sand, or larger, whatever yeah, they use. Materials. So I think product sample would be really important. Yeah. And of what of, of, the, of, of the block or of the the material block image that you want, or if you that's so big that you can't bring it in, find out from the manufacturer where it is locally, so we can drive by and take a look at it's it. Sitting on my property right now. So. Okay, the city uh, did a retaining wall down on Sixth Street, a little bit further west, like Sixth and Grand um, area. Do we know what kind of material that 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 wall was? It is a U-shaped concrete. Um, I, I don't know off the top of my head, but we can look into it. I would think. So. I mean, it just—it's not that far from the property in terms of aesthetics, because I know that was a different type of material too when the city did that. But I, I don't remember. It's been a couple of years. As I've looked at it, it looks like it's six to eight inches deep, and in it in a U-shape each of the the front blocks. These blocks are two by two by four. They're too high, too deep, and four long. And it looks like there's a rounded edge to that. There's a there is a beveled edge to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it'll have flat on the top, but there'll be knobs that'll put them 
together when we have two courses. In your write-up, you said an interesting pattern. Can you define? Um, well, you had a, or yeah, you, you there's, just saw something you had. Um, okay. So this would be the, the main, and so there'd be two blocks, and then this gets bumped out to the edge of the block, and that gets filled with dirt, and it's a planter. Okay. And we'll have junipers coming over it. And that, and so that's what I meant by the interesting, um, and that'll be, okay. be repeated on the okay. other side. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I wanted it to, wanted the blocks to be, look old, look like they were there in the beginning. And that's the only thing I could find. Everything else had texture to it. So do any of these kind of resemble what? You're yeah, uh, kind of. Like I know this the, one has kind of the stamped. Um, that isn't look. what it is. Okay. Those are the ones that are at mm. Kings. The ones that we're getting are from Block um, and they have a beveled edge. And um, is it a smooth face? Block? Yeah, it'll like that? it'll look more like that when it's like that done. One? Yeah, mm -hmm. but it would only be two stacked. The first one will have one course. The second one will have two courses. No, the second one will be in front of the old wall, and then the third one will have two courses, and we're extending out to make. Um, the front yard bigger because it's really narrow and not very much room and it just doesn't fit the grandeur of the house I don't think I think it needs more front yard and um, we're doing site preparation for the garage and I want to use that material to fill in all of those things I think what has happened in recent projects is we've found that the commissioners also Try to speak for everyone on this. We really want to see the real thing. That's what you were getting at. A block that we can look at at some point to see the actual material. It's one thing to look. Mm -hmm. at, yes. You did what you were asked to do. We didn't expect you to. No, there are a ton. They yeah. <laughs> yeah. Say and that's one of the reasons also, because it weighs so much, they're very stable. And we're going to bury them somewhat. We're going to put a footing down and bury them somewhat so it'll be less than 40, 47 inches. And that's what um, I had understood by calling the city that I really didn't need a permit to do anything to, to do this as long as it was under 48 inches. So um, that's my intention. But it's also my intention to make the front more appealing and more consistent and tie the two lots together and make it easier to maintain because it gets pretty ratty. Did you say you were going to take the cast? What? Did you say you were going to reuse the cast? Oh, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Definitely. But the ones you're looking at are two foot by two foot by four foot. Yes. So they weigh about 14, 1,500 pounds a piece. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the way you're terracing, I think, is going to help with the long term That's not having the same crumbling thing going on. So I don't have that. Yeah, yeah. that's what I'm yeah. going for. Exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is definitely what I'm going for. And the other thing is, I love plants. I love roses, and so there will be paths to walk along to to enjoy the plants. So. I would just, excuse me, I would just caution you, you really got to watch the, the base that that's sitting on because I've got a 42 foot tall wall mm -hmm. on my pond. 42 foot? 42 foot tall and I have one side that's starting to sag a little bit and we put in almost six and a half foot of base gravel underneath that. And okay. we still had a little sagging on that one side but we were a lot taller and which are going to be there too. But right. Those blocks do settle because of the I've way. talked with the neighbor used these blocks on his wall and, and they're four high 
And that was his caution too, was to make sure that you go down deep enough and then pour level up, make sure it's all level before you set, set them. So. So it's two different parcels, correct? And there's two homes. It was, and I had them combined legally. Okay. So it's now 512 East. With two. There's only one house, I think. On there's the only one yeah. house. Oh, okay. One, it, the octagon is the only one that's there. Yeah. Okay. She was before us about a year yep. before mm -hmm. COVID, I think, mm -hmm. before COVID. Right. Um, on doing a, a, a garage on the back side, and there was some S excavation that had to be done that's and, what yeah that's and you're what planning on using the dirt from yes. that yeah for the front yard mm -hmm. okay. yeah that's been my plan the whole time okay. so and so when it gets done what's hard for anybody to conceive is the ba my backyard for the octagon house is like seven foot and then it drops off to the neighbors or to the other lot and so I'm taking out that seven foot of dirt that they filled in and uh, putting a garage on the east side. And then the other side is going to be yard yet. So it's a little weird to get that across to anybody. So, but it gives me a nice big, a nice backyard that's above everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> so. Are there any, does commissioners have any questions? Anyone have any? So there's the property outline. So it used to be two lots split right here. You could see the second walkway to where our house may have been. So now it's just one larger parcel. So it sounds like you'll do the wall the full yes. length and mm -hmm. perhaps if this neighbor wants to join in. At least where it's crumbling on his part. Does that wall go to the, to, you said to the second set of steps there? It goes it... to the second set of steps, which okay. is, there's a lot of trees that are not there anymore. And there's one tree that is kind of leaning over. We kept it because my daughter and I both like the, the, the grace of that tree. And so behind that tree is where we want to put um, steps around to a path behind the wall. And in front of the tree, we're going to have a sit, little seating area. So the, the front single course is gonna go the whole way across. And the third, the double course is going to go uh, to extend the, the front, the yard out. So for, for my own clarity, so the, here's the existing wall. Will the second wall go up here? Uh, only out a little farther, probably about I think it's like seven feet out. Okay. Um, so you have existing, then the two walls start behind that, or it starts below towards the street. Okay. There'll be a so single, here's existing right here. Single course going all the way across the whole way. Okay, so down here. Broke up by the, step, the steps. And then the um, single, the old wall will have a course in front of it. And it'll have that bump out so we can have a planter there and a planter here. Okay? But this stops about here. So there's not going to be a middle wall that goes through there. Um, unless we need it. And then back here we'll have a double course going the whole length. And at the edges is where I want to put the old rock that we're finding and lilies to absorb the water. Mm -hmm. So I just want to caution you. Uh, so south of the existing wall is public right away. I know. So I know you, I think you talked to Eric. So just be forewarned that if you start to lay retaining wall there, if for some reason it needs to be moved, I know. it's the homeowner's responsibility. I do know okay. that. Mm -hmm. I am <laughs> so aware of that. just want to caution you before. I am aware of it. The project gets done. But the joy of having it all look copacetic yeah. and... <laughs> So there is a permit process to put something in the public right of way too. We can get you in that right direction if, if Eric hasn't already gotten you in um, that direction. We talked, Eric and I talked about it, but he didn't, he said, I might need to sign a waiver letter. 
Is there another permit thing? Generally, he there's, say, when there's work in the public right away, there's a permit that, so the engineering can sign off on that they're okay with it. What he told me was that I might would have to sign a letter of waiver, but uh, that I would, you know, maybe need to move it or something like that, or it could be destroyed. Huh? Yeah, well, we can talk to the city engineer. I mean, Eric works in the engineering division, but um, I want to just confirm it with the city okay. engineer. All right. Is there anyone from the commission that has any concerns in terms of the design that's being outlined? I'm just throwing this out. Is there any concerns about design? Is the reason I was asking about the stairs, I mean, the one on this side, you said the wall is not going to go over. So like the steps to nowhere, is that going to be included in? The steps to nowhere goes, it has more steps coming behind the tree and will be a path behind the old. So you're going to add steps to bring it into um, that? It may be steps or it may be walking path, you know, like walking, walking stones. That will be a little more rustic. It'll be like somebody wanting a little adventure in the city. I don't, I don't know if that's. Okay. And then it, otherwise it's the steps to, then there's lilies, wild lilies that are growing there now. But um, I hope to tame it with some other things. I just saw there was no other stairs to the other homes, so I was just. Curious yeah, why you were saving this. Uh, it was there were stairs there, but they were very decrepit. From a staff perspective, would there anyone seeing concerns about design? A tough one. <laughs> um, I don't think so. I think it just depends, and we'll get more information on putting a retained wall in the right of way. Okay, and just want to caution you on. On yeah. that component of it. I think my question would be more towards the commission on whether or not those bin blocks are appropriate. Because it looks like the existing wall maybe was limestone and then it was skim coated skim -coated over. Skim coated over. Mm -hmm. So Which was probably why it's crumbling so badly. But yeah. right. um, the um, so you're not actually tearing out the one that's existing, right? You're just kind of Blocks up where... against it and reinforcing it to support it. Okay. No, we're not. Mm -hmm. I don't want it torn out. I've been fighting for that. <laughs> I wouldn't do it. Yeah. Yeah. So if we haven't heard anything about design. Then I'm assuming it does kind of come down to material, is what I'm hearing a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I, that would be my concern. Okay. Material um, and, and not knowing. I just know what the city did further down, and I think. That may not be in the district itself with what the city did, but it might be a good barometer to kind of start and look at that it would maybe be, we wouldn't want to see anything less than maybe. I don't, I mean, I don't know how that. Yeah, since that was a city project, we'd have the, the, the specifications yeah, on it we can share. Um, but I would imagine that it was a concrete material. I mean, they do make those them blocks in a limestone replica. Right. They're colored and stained. And when you see them in one big wall, you can't tell whether it's limestone or whether it's concrete. I agree. And I think that's maybe what you may want to be looking at just a little bit. And I don't, and I. I, I tell me, it's to detail it, it please. It, it's a bin block, but the mm -hmm. face of it, I mean, I think Matt had a picture of one up there that was a concrete one, but they make that that's got a limestone face on it, replica of limestone, and it gives you that appearance of being. Is it something like this? Is that what you're Well, when you had that picture up of the bin blocks, there was the, the big two foot by four foot blocks that were sectioned. Is that what's in that? Okay. You can find it once, but you can never find it the second yeah. time. Right. right. That's what always happens. Uh, there you go. Right down. Somewhere of that right there. And I specifically didn't want the texture because my original wall didn't have that texture. No, what I'm saying is they make them textured like that and they make them smooth. Uh-huh. But they've got the color of limestone. So it's a stained product. I think that 
it's it's not as concerning to me for the two new retaining walls. It would be more as long as you're not taking away material from the existing one um, and then trying to make it something complementary. Um, I, I wouldn't look at it from the skim coat part of it because that was obviously not original. Um, so texture, I understand where you're coming from and wanting it to match. So I, I don't know yet in terms of a recommendation I would have for you on it. Um, if it flat would, would be a, something that the commission would be okay with to match existing or if you'd want to see a texture to it. it was, I mean, it was stone. It was likely a real textured product, right? And it was just basically mudded over mm -hmm. for preservation. So... On the whole block. I mean, mm -hmm. goes down and around the whole... Goes to the next house and the house next to it. Yeah, like in the 1970s, yeah. you know, yeah. what would they do? Yeah. Speckle it. <laughs> you know, right. what, else, what else would you do? And, and, you know, historic preservation wasn't really a movement until the late 70s um, yeah. here. So I, we don't necessarily have record of, of what it was and why they did it. I'm not here trying to help you spend more money. No. <laughs> you should seem like it. <laughs> I, I, I'm not. I really, I, I really, I'm really not. But I do think... It's important for you to take a look at what product, I mean, because I don't think anyone was saying material and everything may be okay, but it is image, appearance, um, and we're not going to design your property, but it's got to conform. And so I think that's, a, I mean, you're, we're just here to just kind of talk it out, not make decisions, mm -hmm. but that's maybe something that you might want to focus on, I think. Okay. I've uh, been looking. Okay. And... I really didn't like the textured because it was like that looked brand new to me. It looked like a later development. And so I was looking, totally looking for something that would look old and could be, have plants in front of it and then just be an element and not have, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, and not be the focus, have the house be the focus and the yard and the, and total design, not the block. And I think so. the landscaping will go a long way and yeah. making it not maybe look as cold. <coughs> exactly. So. <laughs> yeah. So I will probably be back here on the 10th of August, <laughs> hoping for an approval. And you can drive by the alley and see the blocks. Wear old shoes. <laughs> 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 yeah, there's a lot of clay found in that hill so it's not washing away it's all sticking right there but it'll stick to your shoes too so okay so the block you're proposing you've got one on i've got property. 14 of them and i can use them in the back you know to retain the wall between me and the neighbor and to you know finish things out back there um which I hope you don't have any objection to that one. Uh, so you can come by and see it. Okay. Well. Yes. I don't want to carry it in here. I would. I, I don't have a problem with doing a site visit, going out there and taking a look. I mean, if, if the commissioners want to do it and check in with staff and let them know when they're going to go out, so they just staff knows. You know, mm -hmm. um, I, I would high, highly encourage you to continue to look at material um, because I know the prior commissions, there was some leeway on on the the back with the garage and public works I know was working with you on the design, um, but it is the front terrace and it's okay. the front door of everything and it's a big appearance. And I guess that would be my, again, not trying to spend your money, but I want to make sure that from my perspective, it, it, it works, it mm -hmm. works and not, just another patch from, you know, what block has right. available. Mm -hmm. I understand what you're saying. Okay. This is a work session. Anyone else have any questions? It's a neat property. It is. It is a neat property. It is. When you're there, you need to walk through the inside to see what's happening there. So. All right. 
Anything else from Matt or Laura or Jake? No, I think that's it. All righty. Good to see everyone here, too. It is good to see everybody. All righty. Okay, thank you. Plugging away. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you.